Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Greg Olmo with Key Performance Ideas, and I would like to welcome you to our webinar, Pod to Pod Data Integration in Oracle EPM Cloud. Today's webinar will be presented by Brad Mathant. Brad has 16 years of EPM project experience, successfully implementing Oracle Hyperion solutions for both domestic and international organizations. Brad understands the full EPM project lifecycle and leverages his strong business and accounting background to deliver world-class solutions. He is certified in Hyperion planning and S-Space and also has experience with HPCM, SBMEE, and ODI. In fact, Brad recently implemented a PBCS solution that included integrations between five pods. Brad, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Greg. Welcome and thanks for joining me today as I talk about pod-to-pod -pod data integration in the Oracle EPM Cloud. Today we're going to cover what is pod-to-pod -pod integration, We'll walk through setting up a pod-to-pod -pod integration, and we'll close with how this integration can help with your overall processes. First, when we are talking about pod-to-pod -pod integration, we are talking about the integration of products within the EPM cloud. The EPM cloud is a suite of applications that are software as a service. Three of the cloud products that benefit from the pod-to-pod -pod integration are Planning and Budgeting Cloud, or PBCS, Enterprise Planning and Budgeting Cloud, or EPBCS, and Financial Consolidation and Close Cloud, or FCCS. The integration works between all three products as well as situations where you have multiple pods of the same product. Originally, the only tools available to us for data integration in the cloud were the native import data, which was applicable to planning, so PBCS and EPBCS, and data management, which was a light version of the on-premise FDMEE. We could automate those tools with EPM Automate or the REST API. Both of the integration tools use flat files. To move data between pods, we would need to extract the data from one pod, bring the file from the cloud down to our local servers, and then upload that file back to the other pod. With pod-to-pod -pod integration, we have a feature that was added to data management that now allows us to move data from one instance of PBCS to another, or between PBCS, EPBCS, or FCC. CS, or any combination there in between. This integration doesn't require the movement of flat files, and it's a relatively seamless integration. So how do we set up pod-to-pod -pod integration? Those of you familiar with data management will find that setting up this process is very similar to setting up a process to load a flat file. Those of you not familiar with data management we'll see that there are a number of small steps that may not make a lot of sense at first, but just follow along, and once you've navigated through the flow a couple of times, you'll have no problems. Pod-to-pod -pod integration is initiated from the pod that contains the source data. So the first set, step in setting up the integration is to open data management from the source pod. From the menu on the left, you'll navigate to the Setup tab and select Target Application under the Register section. In the top section of the Target Application page, you will click on Add to create a new Target Application. If you're familiar with the on-premise FDMEE, you'll notice that this looks the same with the exception of the Cloud Target Type. The Cloud Target Type is the one that you want to select. Once you select to set up a new cloud target, you will get a pop-up box where you will enter the information to connect to your target pod. The information you need to connect are the target application URL, 
the target application username, and the password for that user. And finally, you'll need the target application identity domain. Once you've entered those four parameters, there's a blue box you see that says Show Applications. Click on that. At this point, the source will be connecting to the target. Once the information has been resolved that you entered, you should be able to pull the drop down under the type and select the type of application you are going to connect to. In this instance, you're seeing planning. If other instances, if you're using an EPBCS application or FCCS, you'll see the other options. Select the type of application we're going to connect to, and then select the application name. Again, the drop-down box will list the applications that are in the target application. Once selected, go ahead and click OK. You should now see the target application in your list. So you can see her here, we had set up FIN reporting, and that is now displaying in our target applications. Now that the target application is defined, we are going to create an import format. This is where we're going to define the high-level maps at the dimension level between the source application and the target application. From the Setup tab on the left, we're going to select the import format. In the import format screen, we are again going to click Add. We are then going to give our import format a name. In the screenshot here, we're calling it Sample. Then we select our source application. Using the magnifying glass, you will get a list of the applications that are in your source pod. Finally, we're going to select the target application. Using the magnifying glass there, you will see the target application you created in the previous step. Select that, and then you will save this information. Once this information is saved, the mapping section will populate in the lower pane of the screen. On the right, you will see the list of dimensions that are in your target application. In this example, we have mapped our source dimensions to the target. Not all dimensions from either application need a mapping. When you've set up your mappings, hit Save, and we can move on to the next step. In this next step, we are going to create a location. Again, you'll navigate to this using the Setup menu on the left. We'll click Add once we're in the Location screen. And we're going to give our location a name. Once we give it a name, we're going to select the import format we just created in the previous step. Click Save, and we're ready for the next step. In this next step, we're going to create the load rule that will run the integration between the source and the target pod. This is the object that you're going to call when automating the process. We start by going to the Workflow tab and clicking on Data Load Rule. Once in the Data Load Rule screen, the first thing we will need to do is to set the point of view. The point of view is a combination of location like the one we created in the last step, a period and a category. A category is usually a scenario like budget, forecast, or actual. At this point, the location and the category are the important elements. We want to select the location we just created, and we want to select a category corresponding to the type of data we want to move. In this case, we're going to be moving actual data between the two pods, so we've selected actual. The screen defaulted to the period of January 2018. It could be set to any value um, at this point, as we're not worried about actually moving the data. We're just, again, worried about the location and the category. So select those and click OK. Once the point of view has been set, we are going to start by clicking Add. We'll give our load rule a name. Then we'll define our filters. Unless you've had experience with on-premise FDMEE or cloud 
data management with application-to-application -application integration. This is the second area where the pod integration deviates from a standard data management integration. The filters we are setting up here define the data we wish to extract from the source application. Anyone with SBase experience can think of this as similar to creating a report script or writing an MDX query. Those of you with HFM experience, it is similar to the data extract. So screen here, we're seeing how we've defined the filters. We're showing the dimensions from the source application on the left, and then a filter condition. In this particular case, for the product, we're taking the level zero descendants of product and the member no product. For the product department, we're taking the level, descend level zero descendants of department country, again, level zero descendants of country, country orphans, business level zero, or the, then we're taking business at the no business member and level zero descendants of business units. For the account, we selected the no net income level zero descendants. While it's not required to set a filter for every dimension in your source application, I recommend defining each one as it makes it easier to know the exact data set you are retrieving. You'll also see in the parameters there is an option to extract your dynamically calculated data. By default, this is set to no. If you need to pull data that is created by a member formula, you would set this to yes. Once our filters are defined, we'll save the data load rule and move on to the next step. last step in the process is to set up our data load mapping. When we created the import format, we defined how the dimensions are mapped between the application in our two pods. Here we can define very detailed mappings. Those of you who have already worked with data management know the power of this functionality. I'm not going to go into detail here, but you will define how the data flows from the source application to the target. Mappings could be as simple as source equals target, or they can be quite complex. We've built integrations where the mappings perform currency translation driven by multiple dimensions. The screenshot here shows how we are mapping accounts that start with 11 to a target account of 1100, and those that start with 12 map to the target account of 1210, and so forth. Just like all other data management integration, Maps need to be defined for all of the target dimensions. Once the maps are complete, your setup is complete. Now that all our setup is complete, we can go ahead and run our pod-to-pod -pod integration. We would go back to the data load rule, and we would execute the rule we created. This process is the same as other integrations with data management, except that we are now moving data from one pod to another. Once we've successfully completed this process, we can go to our target pod and validate that the data loaded correctly. Now that we've gone through the setup, you can see that overall, it is a relatively simple process to get a seamless integration between your multiple pods, and we don't need to worry about any flat file movement. Once we have these integrations set up, we can further simplify the process by leveraging EPM Automate and the REST APIs to fully automate the pod-to-pod integration. We could even use the scheduler within data management if we so choose. Hopefully, you walk away today with a better understanding of the pod-to-pod -pod integration setup, and you are able to see the benefits this can give you in your multiple pod environment. I'd like to thank you for taking the time for joining me today to hear about the pod-to-pod -pod integration. Greg? Thank you, Brad. And thank you all for joining us today for our webinar, Pod-to-Pod -pod Data Integration in Oracle EPM Cloud. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us.
Brad and my contact information are displayed on your screen. Thank you again and have a great day.